Hey, thanks for joining me today on this episode of the Verbal Echo Podcast. We get to listen to real people's stories of insight, grit, endurance, and maybe a little bit of I can't believe that really happened to you. I'm your host, Monica Martin. Let's get to it. Hi, and welcome to episode two of the Verbal Echo podcast. I've got a really great guest on today. Her name is Sarah Rowe from Kansas. She's actually a really great friend of mine, and I couldn't have thought of a better guest to have my first real uh, conversation with on this podcast. So I hope you really enjoy getting to know Sarah, and she's got a really great story about uh, how she has succeeded in school while balancing jobs and um, struggling with uh, some attention problems. Uh, but she's really kicked it out of the park and has been very successful. So I hope you really enjoy her story. A uh, little disclaimer before we get started. Uh, when I recorded this first episode a couple of months ago, I had a really bad microphone, so <laughs> just bear with me on this episode. The audio quality will get better on episode three. So uh, anyway, I hope you really enjoy getting to know Sarah. She's got some really um, exciting stories to tell and uh, about some transformation and and how she was able to really come out of her shell and succeed. She's really amazing and I hope you enjoy her story. Hi, welcome to the Verbal Echo podcast. So today I have a special guest because she's my first guest. Uh, her name's Sarah Rowe and she is currently living in Kansas and Sarah is here today to talk with us about her love for learning. Um, so I'm gonna introduce her. Uh, she just moved back to Wichita, Kansas, her hometown, after spending the last 20 years in Colorado. She works for a recruiting company out of Denver, spends her days telling bad dad jokes to her coworkers and recruiting for Fortune 500 companies. When she isn't working, she spends her time writing, cuddling with her cat, Alex Straza, or hanging out with her parents and their adorable dog, Lucky. She's passionate about environmental science and music, and she's currently learning to play guitar with lessons from James. So welcome, Sarah. Thank you, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so um, before we started, you were telling me about um, your experience with learning and um, how it was kind of a, a long road to success. And uh, so uh, I was just wondering if you could give us a little bit of background. <laughs> Yeah, so when I was younger, I wasn't ever really interested in school. I had a really little bit of a, just kind of a rough childhood, and, uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. Just a lot went on, and I wasn't really wanting to focus on school so much. There were more interesting things, and that I was, there were more interesting things to learn about, more interesting things to do. I just didn't have time for it. I didn't care for it. Um, I did kind of have a high school English teacher who, you know, she saw some talent in me, and she thought I was a great writer, and so I ended up being a teacher's aide for her. Um, she really kind of instilled some sort of, like, ethical something with school. I don't know. She made me passionate about writing, and I think that was the only thing that really got me through school when I was in high school. So um, I ended up being a teacher's aide for her, which was cool because she'd let me skip class. But in the end, I think I have her, I owe her a lot of my, a lot for just the, what she taught me about English and grammar, because to this day, I am just a grammar Nazi. It's got to be all or nothing with me and grammar. <laughs> so um, I ended up barely graduating high school. I always was getting into a lot of trouble and my mom decided to kind of pull a fast one on me, which I totally deserved. She, I couldn't really make a decision on whether or not I wanted to go to college. So she basically told me that unless I went to college, I had to be on her insurance plan. So, and my mother's very, very honest to this day. Sometimes she's almost a little bit too honest sometimes, but I like to tell my parents stories about whatever trouble I was causing when I was growing up. So um, touche, mother. Um, it was a really good lesson for me. I did use my own money. I attended a little community college here in Kansas. Um, I lasted about three weeks before I stopped going to classes. I 
didn't really, it wasn't that I didn't want to go. I, it just wasn't where I wanted to be. There were way cooler things to be doing. I was working and I was partying and it just, college wasn't where I wanted to be. So three weeks later, I pretty much just dropped out and uh, little did I know I could have gotten my money back, but lessons were learned. Um, <laughs> and <Right>? so uh, <laughs> after that time, I had no desire to go back. So um, in 2012, I had a friend who was working at the local community college and she, she saw something in me that I didn't see. She knew that I was pretty obsessed with rock hunting and all things that have anything, anything to do with geology. Um, my current favorite podcast is a podcast by Allie Ward called Ologies. Um, if you haven't listened to it, you have to. She talks about everything science, everything that has anything to do with um, anything science. Geology, she talks about, oh gosh, I don't know, volcanoes, which are kind of my favorite. Oh, wow. But yeah. She, yeah. She, so my friend made me sit there at her house, apply for this college. Once I got accepted, she insisted that I just take one class. So I didn't really believe that I was capable of doing it because I'd never done well in school, but um, I did it. So I obliged and signed up for a geology class. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, before the first was, day. That was in Colorado. Yeah, Colorado Marble okay. College. Mm -hmm. So before class even started, of course, my book came, and I opened that book up, and I was just, I was terrified of what I was seeing. I was like, there's no way I can know any of these things. These are a bunch of big words. Like, there's just no way. So instead of just putting it down and giving up, like, that was what I would have done before, um, I just decided to go ahead and Open the, open the book and look at the things and after you know the first chapter I was obsessed I couldn't put it down so a couple weeks later class starts I walk into a classroom full of very young children and uh, I had my little dog-eared textbook and my equally weary <laughs> companion workbook clutched at my side I was ready to go so that semester went by it was a really great class um, I, I learned about more things than I could even tell you in a whole year it's, mm -hmm. It was something that I was so fascinated with, so I really took a liking to just the learning aspect of it, and for once in my life, I loved homework, so um, I uh, finished that semester with an A. I was very proud of myself. I was like, I had no idea I was even capable of this. Of course, mm -hmm. my mother is over the moon, so proud of me, and of <laughs> course, I got the, I told you you could do it. Well, yes, thank you, right. and I could, and I did, and I think that when I'd gone to school before, it's just, I was so young at the time. I was 17, barely just turned 18. Um, I graduated a little early because I was born right on the cusp of that like spring, summer, fall thing. So um, end of the semester, I'd, I'd trained myself to learn again. That wasn't an easy thing after 10 years out of school. Um, oh, right. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> my brain is kind of, you know, waiting tables and stuff. And I, I was really good at that. But um, it wasn't causing me to use my brain like, like school does, mm -hmm. you know, you're not learning. And so I passed that class with an A and uh, thus began my school career. Um, the next semester, I went to school full time. I aced all my classes, held down a full time and a part time job. I was mm -hmm. waiting tables. I was bartending. I was getting home at two o'clock in the morning and having to study for an exam the day after. Um, it was it was difficult. I was also holding it down a pretty profitable full time drinking job. Mm -hmm. So not something I would recommend. It really, <laughs> I, I honestly wonder like. <laughs> Right. It complicates everything, <laughs> and I honestly wonder how, like, what I would have been able to do, what I would have been capable of had I not been drinking during that time, because right. I was on the dean's list for almost my entire college career. Oh, wow. So, um, That's such an accomplishment, you know? It really is, <laughs> and it wasn't easy. Yeah. I definitely worked my butt off for that. Right. But, um, so... so uh, when I was hearing about your story, um, I, like... Immediately, I thought about this word and this character trait called grit, and I actually looked this up before we got on, and I wanted to read this to you, and it, it's so crazy because um, you were talking about geology, you know, and how that was such a um, an interest of yours, and so I have to read this to you. Grit, a hard, sharp granule as of sand abrasive, composed of such granules, um, structure of a stone that adapts to grinding, 
and the firmness of mind or spirit, unyielding courage in the face of hardship or danger. <laughs> and I love when that. I read that, I thought this story is so much about that. <laughs> it, it is in more ways than one. I like how you tied I'm, that in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, you also yeah. mentioned that. So, so you were, you know, you were you were studying and you were kind of battling a lot of personal stuff, working your butt off. It sounds like. What uh, what were your other studies in? So I was pretty, I took every single creative writing class I could take. Um, I took creative mm -hmm. writing classes, literature classes. Um, I had some of my just very favorite teachers were my English and literature and creative writing teachers. Um, it really, writing was somewhere where I could go when I didn't want to be where I was. Um, mm -hmm. And that was pretty often. I Before I got into school, I didn't really feel like I had anything to be proud of besides the fact that I could wait tables really well. <laughs> so right. it was something that it allowed me to, to get into character of another person or get into just another story that wasn't mine. And mm -hmm. I thought I was fascinated with that. And I got an A on every single writing paper that I turned in um, with, you know, Big, big letter A and bunch of big red words at the bottom telling me how awesome I was. Right. That was huge for me. That was huge for my, my ego and my confidence. And I actually come from a line of writers. My mother is an excellent writer. And they're, I'm actually, let's see, um, Ray Bradbury is somewhere in my family tree. So oh, I'm a leaf wow. off of the Ray Bradbury tree. Oh, so that is so awesome. Very fun. A little fun fact about Sarah. A little yeah. trivia fact. <laughs> and I only know that because my mom's insane with uh, she really loves the the genealogy stuff. So, mm -hmm. but it was writing really brought something out in me that I could be proud of. So. Right. Yeah. And you also have a couple of blogs that we're gonna. Um, talk about here at the end, but um, I think that's so exciting. So it sounds like your mom is such a force in your life because you've mentioned her a couple of times. So how does she fit into all of this? Oh, she's wonderful. So we didn't always have a great relationship when I was growing up. Um, I was one of quite a few children, and we just didn't ever have the chance to really get close. My mother and I really got close after I left home actually out of after I moved out to Colorado oh, so okay. and uh, once I started school she was thrilled and uh, she just really uh, it became such a thing to me to get called my mom the second I walked out of that exam and be like oh my god I aced it I did it and it just uh -huh. became so <laughs> important to me to be able to make her proud after so many years of what were you doing last night where were you like it was just something mom, that was that. so wonderful <laughs> Yeah, I think all moms do that. I think, well, as we get older, we know that they do it because they love us. But at the time, it's like so annoying. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And she was my biggest supporter as I went through college. She, mm -hmm. you know, she really was excited and always wanting to hear about what I was doing. And, and to this day, she's still my biggest supporter. So she's a lovely lady. Oh, awesome. So she, so you guys are there in Kansas together. So tell me about Kansas. I mean, how... How hard was that to leave uh, Colorado that you loved so much and it, you know, you were going to school there and you had friends and a job and how hard was it to, to go back to your hometown and your home state? It was very easy for me. Um, I was in a situation where I wasn't going to be able to grow and I wasn't going to be able to do what I wanted to do with my life. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I recommend anyone to never let somebody stop you from doing what you want to do. Um, I have terrible taste in men. So <laughs> it was just kind of, I saw myself in a bad situation and I didn't see it going anywhere. Right. And then we, one weekend I packed up my stuff and I left. So he was surprised. It was, there was a lot of shock factor going on there. Right. Yeah. So, so you're in Kansas and you're, and then you get this amazing job, it sounds like, and this amazing new opportunity. And oh, how... Yeah. How has that been uh, transitioning from being a student and like post pandemic, like going through all of that and then uh, and now you're working and you're in this new career? How did how was that? 
It's really been a big change for me. I went from you know, waiting tables and bartending to working from home. So now I, I don't leave my house. I've become somewhat of a recluse, um, it's, which mm-hmm. is kind of nice with, if you think about like right now, all the COVID going around and the flows and mm-hmm. I heard through the grapevine that whooping coughs back again. So oh, great. Um, awesome. it's really nice to be at home. I get to hang out with my cat and mm-hmm. sit here and have my candles and my nice quiet music going <laughs> when I'm not, talking to people. I interview quite a few people daily. So Mm -hmm. it's really interesting. I've had to learn a lot about, um, I'm hiring for maintenance and HVAC roles. So I've Mm -hmm. had to learn a lot about heating, ventilation, air condition, um, refrigeration. Like I know more about how Walmart, (laughs) Walmart refrigeration (laughs) systems work than I ever thought I would. Wow. Um, that's Even quite, after, yeah. <laughs> after like all my time in school, I never thought I would be learning about these things. So, oh, that's you know, it's so weird how things like that uh, push us into these new areas, and then before you know it, you're learning all about refrigeration, and oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Oh, uh, yeah. And you never know, like, I wonder if I'm ever going to use this again, or if this is just some little piece of information that I get to pack into my brain. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did graduate in 2019 with two associate's degrees. I've got one in history, one in environmental studies. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I still want to go back. I have, I took so many years of classes. I mean, uh, I was in school for, I don't know, like eight years. Um, With the credits that I currently have, I could get three more degrees with two more years of school. Uh, I've got my eye on Mm -hmm. a Associate of Science in Environmental Studies, Associate of Arts in Geography, Associate of Arts in Psychology. Um, after 10 years in school, most people would have a doctorate. I have a sprinkling right. of this and that. I want to learn about everything. And I can go back to school tomorrow and get my HVAC certifications and my universal EPA. And mm-hmm. that's really out of line from anything that I ever thought I would do. But right. I know a lot about it and it's Mm -hmm. one year of school and these guys are out here making like 25 to 60 dollars an hour right so you never know so here for the you know this country was built on uh people who worked with their hands and i you know i think it's just so it's such an amazing like even my own son went to went to trade school and i think it's like when when i was growing up it was all about you know go to four year go to four year college get your degree you know and then and then we were all just kind of forced into the working world like well now what the heck do i do you know and yeah. trade schools are coming back and i think it's such a great opportunity for young people coming out of high school, you know, whether it's an automotive mechanics, which is what my son went to school for, um, or, you know, like plumbing or HVAC or whatever. And it's such a good career. And it's, um, I think it's just because, I don't know, for a long time, it was kind of looked down upon, you know, to be a tradesman. And, you know, our parents kind of pushed, um, oh, go to school, get your four-year degree or whatever. Like, I have a degree in sociology what the hell am I going to do with a degree in sociology, you know? Right. And, you know, and I ended up on the train of waiting tables uh, for years and being a chef and all of that good stuff. But I just think it's really cool that, um, you know, the trades are coming back and it's so much more respected. I mean, have you seen the boats that plumbers have? I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> It's shit work, but somebody's got to do it. Oh, wow. right? Yeah. What well, my so. mom's always said, she's like, you know, everyone has to, for the world to work the way it works and for everything to even out, somebody has to be there to dig ditches. And she'd tell us when we were kids, she's like, if you're the one that digs the ditch, I don't even care as long as you're happy. Right. So I really am, uh, I taught preschool, Montessori preschool, and in that way of thinking, you let the kids go to what they gravitate towards. And I really think that, you know, I don't know if that was an option for you, but it wasn't an option for me when I was a kid. Had Mm -hmm. I been able to do that, it makes me wonder where I would have gone. Now, I wouldn't change anything for Mm -hmm. a minute, but... It just makes me wonder because my interests right now are just so varied. And even, you know, I'm talking about HVAC and stuff. I never would have found an interest in it, but science happens there. And I love science. So, right, you know, yeah. it's just, you never know where you're going to end up. And I think that those kind of 
ways of thinking are really cool because now we're going to have kids who are who are doing the things that they're passionate about and there's no better way to get a job done well than by somebody who's doing it because they're passionate about it. Yeah, it's all about passion and I think there's such a, an honest integrity about that um, to find passion in whatever you do and it's honest work no matter what it is and it should be respected. I think it's great. Yeah, and also the diversity like keeping a lot of fields of work open with a lot of diversity. And I just think there's such a bandwidth for that now. Oh yeah. And yeah, super well, important. that. And then now we have all of our, you know, you and I grew up in an age where somebody would have said, I'm YouTube famous. And we would have looked at him and been like, you're what, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Oh my, we my have... son had a YouTube channel and he was like eight. Yeah. What the, and, and I have no clue, and I, I don't know if he makes any money at it, but I mean, I, now I look about, look, you know, I think about it, I think it's so cool, you know, like, that's so cool, you know, and now there's like TikTok, which I refuse to download. Yeah, I won't Because TikTok. I know I won't get sucked in. Um, but yeah. Instagram videos are the, are the, um, are bad enough, but. <laughs> oh, Yeah. Well, and now I am a little inspired, you know, after I went in and looked at my blogs, I'm just inspired to do that. I have a running list of things that I want to write about because in my mm -hmm. mind, like, my education is the most valuable thing that I have. Mm -hmm. I have stuff, but nothing will ever be as valuable as my mind is. So, you know, I, it's time for me to use that. And I, I do use that daily at work, but, you know, at some point I do want to go back and finish those classes off and get those degrees. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely something that's going to happen I just I need to have the time in my life to be able to do that and I'm very career focused right now so uh -huh. it's not really something that I'm quite ready to tackle yet but it'll happen yeah. I'll do it well also you sent me this really cool thing that you did a number of years ago uh, called and I know correct me if I'm wrong but icky guy yep and yeah can you explain what this is it's for anyone interested I'm sure you can google it but um and I'll put a the the correct spelling out there at the bottom of the podcast but tell us what that's about so that's something I did in uh, one of my last classes it was um probably that was the last assignment I ever did in college um that was something that basically it's a Venn diagram and in your outside circles you put things that you're passionate about and once those all link together that's your that's your purpose in life it's in ancient Japanese philosophy um it's kind of just enveloped the way that Japanese people live they believe it's their to make them happy they believe that that is their purpose in life um it's it was something that I, I overthink absolutely everything. So I overthought it and overthought it. And finally, after about three days with no sleep, I sat down and just decided that whatever came out of me came out of me. And I wrote like a little paper to go along with my little Venn diagram. And I sent it to my mom. I'll never forget sitting there. I was actually at work when I was doing it. So sorry. And I sent it to my mom and she was like, this is amazing. Like, this is beautiful. This absolutely just captures exactly who you are. Mm -hmm. um, you have four circles and it's what you love, what you're good at, what you can be paid for and what the world needs. And you mix them all together and that's your icky guy that's your purpose mm -hmm. in being um and i actually need to sit down and do it again because that has changed and it will change as the world changes and as your interests change mm -hmm. um, but it's something i would recommend everybody to do because it really once you sit down and do it as long as you don't overthink it you can really get a good idea of who you are and what it is that you want with your life right and when i saw this uh not only did i want to do this so um, but it, it, you know, one of the things that I do is I teach, uh, in journaling and a lot of people think, oh, journaling and they kind of roll their eyes, but journaling is such a power and this could definitely be, um, something that, uh, you do, you know, a journal doesn't, isn't like, oh, dear diary today, uh, you know, <laughs> it can be a, a, a lot of different kinds of things that you do and you put it into just as simple as a notebook. It's yes. more like an active process. Yeah. But um, I thought this was, could definitely be used as a journaling technique. Yeah, I actually just got a, um, just a 
Witch or a, I don't know, Daily Guided Journal off Amazon. They're very cheap. I would highly recommend everyone get one. Um, some For some people, it's hard to sit down and really write what's in your mind. Um, mm-hmm. For me, it comes pretty easily, and it's natural for me. I sit down, and I start with a topic, and it just kind of flows. Oh. So, um, But I would recommend it, those. Those are great. And it looks like when I'm just looking at hers, you know, it – it just looks like a lot of energy. Like there's all these different topics. Um, some of them are archetypal, but then a lot of them are just like music, writing, creativity, you know, like it, it's definitely very personal, but I think it, it looks like it would be a great way to kind of dig in and uh, cut through all the noise that might be going on in your head. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I tried to overthink mine and I'm just guilty of overthinking everything. Um, as mm-hmm. I'm getting older, I am just kind of figuring out that that doesn't really get me anywhere. I spin my wheels and spin my wheels, but it doesn't really get me very far. And right. what's more important, I think, is just to sit down and not think too hard about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's when the information really flows. So this kind of ties back into your love for learning. And um, if you were to tell people, like, one big thing that you really have learned over the years about just learning what would that be it's never too late um i you know i feel like a lot of people think they think it's too late to learn they think it's too late to go back to college Mm -hmm. i wasn't even one of the oldest people in most of my college classes um i had a lot of people in there that were a lot older than me i had a 70 year old lady in a class with me um it's never too late and it's so easy to do there's really no excuse to do it now one semester i went to school on scholarships you know i didn't really have the money um so i just went on scholarships and it's cool because now i have a retired um, air force veteran grandfather who he's like if you ever want to go back the money's here for you Uh, so i'm very very lucky for that and Mm -hmm. but if not you know there are tons of scholarships out there and there's no reason not to Um, education is invaluable and it's really the only thing that you know when the world caves in on itself you'll at least be able to you know have some education to go back on Um, you know it's I just think it's the most important thing and if if you wait you'll never do it so Mm -hmm. You know, you got to jump on it while you can and start with one class. I started with one class, and I remember one semester I had 10 to 15 classes that I was just dying to take, and my mom had to convince me that they'll be there next semester. (laughs) You could take them next semester. They're not going anywhere. And with COVID, things did change, but they almost changed for the better as far as college Mm -hmm. is concerned. Um, You can take almost any class online now. So Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really did transform I mean, for all the crap that we got about COVID, it so transformed the space of going to school and also work and work. I mean, it it just, it's been such a positive thing overall, I think. Um, I always look, try to look for the positive and it's really, I mean, it transformed my life because I was in school also during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I mean, the pandemic, uh, as much as we kind of, roll our eyes about it and it really it has benefited us in a lot of uh ways such as technology absolutely yeah i i mean it got me out of a bad relationship so i'm grateful for it Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i am pretty anti-social i'm pretty introverted uh working remotely is one of the best things that's ever happened to me Uh, Mm -hmm. i also have an autoimmune disease so not being out and about and waiting tables and touching people's spit during covid is really (laughs) been pretty awesome i oh yeah that's oh yeah we could have a whole episode just on waiting tables which Oh, uh, let's do it. I, you know, uh, I'm so excited that Sarah is here because I think that we will definitely have to do this many times because uh, so much, so many topics that we could talk about. We could just, you could just be my co-host. That's it. I've decided. <laughs> yeah, you and I could talk for days about things. I was sitting here actually writing a list last night of things we could talk about, and oh yeah, yeah I was up late. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Our love for food and beverage, um, because we've both worked in food and bev for so many years. Uh, shout out to all of our chefs and waiters out there. 
Um, <laughs> so many but, good ones. Oh my gosh! But so I, you so you wanted to tell us about, and this kind of ties back into learning. So you've been learning how to play guitar, and yes. we're gonna put this. She has Sarah has found this guy named James, and he's got this amazing guitar instruction program called GoodGuitarist.com, and we'll put the link down. But tell us about this and how you got involved with this. Oh, here we go again. So <laughs> this, this goes back to my mom. Mm -hmm. um, during COVID, she decided to play guitar. She played long, long ago. Um, was never really got into it too much. We were always a pretty musical family, but I play, I play a variety of instruments. But she got into it. She's gotten absolutely incredible. Um, I'm very, very proud of her. So for Christmas, I think it was last year, she got me a guitar. So uh, I have to be the first to admit I have not sat down and actually done what I should do with it. I haven't committed to it. Um, it's definitely on my list of things to do after the crazy Christmas season is over. But mm -hmm. she actually spent the money on these lessons, and this guy's amazing. He's very, like, well, I say he's patient. He's not sitting there dealing with your terrible playing, so that might be irrelevant. But <laughs> he's great. He talks about things in ways that you can understand. He uh, goes slowly through the lessons. He's absolutely wonderful. Um, I need to actually make myself commit to at least a lesson a day. They're short. Some of them are five minutes. Some of them are 20 minutes. He'll talk mm -hmm. about what kind of instrument you should buy. Um, he'll give you little songs that you can play. If you don't like rock, he'll give you, um, you know, like a bluegrass song or a country song. Or He has a little bit of something for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I would highly recommend him. It's totally worth it. Um, but, yeah, oh, that's I my next goal is to play some guitar. <laughs> awesome. And, you know, and music is such a great way to uh, escape it uh, work, reality, whatever, just kind of gets you into the other side of your brain. So that's awesome. I'm definitely going to, I'll put a link to this. Um, and if there's any, anyone out there thinking, oh man, I need a new hobby after the holiday, it'd be a great, um, yeah, great way to uh, bring some creativity into your life. I think we need to use both sides of our brain. So um, oh, yeah. that's just another way. I mean, the arts are, oh man, we could talk for hours about the arts, but, um, yeah, guitar. This is awesome. So thanks so much for sharing that. Um, absolutely. So when, so winding, uh, winding down, um, uh, so tell us about your two, so we can, yeah, tell us about your two blogs that you have going and we'll put links to those, um, below. Yeah, so uh, one of my, I took an e environmental economics class. In that class, we actually were required to write a blog. Um, a blog was something that was very unfamiliar to me. I wasn't big into necessarily reading them. Of course, we can't be online and not read a blog at some point. But I really hadn't followed what that meant. Um, so in that class, I learned how to do this blog. So I have an environmental economics blog. And... That was just, that's something that I will expand more on. Um, I'd actually forgotten that I'd done it all together. But it's something that I just, I just noticed last night that I had it and I started reading through it and I was like, man, this stuff's good. <laughs> like, got a pretty good brain inside <laughs> this head. But then I've got another blog that I started with a creative writing paper I'd written and then I decided to post it as a blog and Actually, I haven't posted anything in that blog for a long time, so this is my inspiration to get back in there and keep posting. I have a mile-long list of things that I want to write about. Um, some of them are mm -hmm. science-related, some of them are not. And But I, I love to write. I'm currently writing a book about, it's going to be probably a short story, because sometimes I just can't stop. Um, but it's about a dream I had about a haunted house where I rode the elevator up, and the upstairs of the house was inhabited with ghosts and when I oh, flipped the light switch <laughs> on the uh, ghosts came to life and they knew that I was there and I knew that they were there it was and it's a murder mystery so uh, oh I love it yeah uh, I just we're both, right. um, a bit more. yeah uh, we're both murderinos so we could do another uh chat about 
Sarah has a great story about a serial killer in her hometown. So that's definitely going to be another episode that we go into because I cannot wait to hear this story. Oh, yeah. uh, so you have to tune in for that one. That will be in the future for sure. <laughs> I think I'm going to put that on the top number one of my next uh, list here. I oh, yeah. definitely want to hear about this, uh, this story. So, um, yeah. So also what I have to ask this for every every one of my guests. So tell me one interesting thing about where you live or where you'd like to live. And I think you mentioned Colorado um, that people might not know. Hmm. Well, I was hanging out with my parents last night and we were talking about I want to get a metal detector. And Chisholm Trail actually runs right through my little hometown. Um, I, I actually want to go out there and kind of experience it. I haven't been out there yet. Um, there's really not a ton of interesting stuff, at least interesting to me, going on in Kansas. Um, but I am very interested in history. So... I, I'm pretty fascinated with the history of Kansas, and I think it's cool that this is a place that people were, you know, we, the frontiersmen right before they got to Colorado. Um, yeah. But yeah. Kansas was also once a sea, so there are a lot of fossils of seashells and clams and things like that here. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know, it's an interesting place. It's growing on me. I uh, I do love my Colorado, but... I'm going to I'm going to dig into Kansas as much as I can cuz I love being here with my family. So, I'm going to have to find some interesting things to do. Well, I think with a metal, you said a metal detector. I think with that yeah. you, you're definitely going to find something. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't wait to hear about. Maybe you can find some cool relic from that some pioneer dropped on the Chisholm Trail, you know, like All right. I don't well, know. and if you think about it, they had to, they had to like when people would die, they would dig their butt or dig holes, put their bodies in maybe in the trail itself, and they would dump their blood oh. because they didn't want their, oh. they didn't want to carry that weight in their wagons. Um, mm-hmm. They might have to dump belongings before they have to go across a river. Um, so it's right. you know oh, those wow. are great places to look. Oh, I, that sounds that sounds like an adventure. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, I just want to say thank you so much uh, for being my first ever podcast guest. And I look forward to doing this many times. And we have a, we have a new saying for this. This is a Sarah <laughs> So I just want to thank Sarah Rowe for coming on and um, we'll see you guys next time. Yeah, and thank you, and I'm looking forward to it. All right. Thanks, Sarah. All right. Be sure and hit that subscribe or follow button wherever you listen to great pod content. I'd love it if you could tell a friend about this podcast, and you can find any links mentioned by my guest or by me in the show notes below. Our music is Funk Beats by Ecolix, and you can find them on the Audio Jungle. I'll catch you next time around. See you soon.